Hey guys, who are you? Welcome to Core Vision. The endless step, the horses. Where am I, guys? I guess it's Kazakhstan. Welcome to Kazakhstan, guys. We'll be exploring this country. We'll be visiting the major cities, Almaty, Astana, and Shymkent. And we'll be trying delicious food. So let's begin the journey. First of all, Kazakhstan is huge. It's the ninth largest country in the world, the size of Western Europe. It's located mainly in Central Asia, bordering Russia to the north and west, China to the east, Kyrgyzstan to the southeast, Uzbekistan to the south, and Turkmenistan to the southwest, with a coastline along the Caspian Sea. But with all that area, the population of the country is just 19.6 million people, so it has one of the lowest population densities in the world, fewer than six people per square kilometer. Let's take a quick look at the history. The territory of modern Kazakhstan had historically been inhabited by different nomadic groups. In the 8th and 9th centuries, Arabs conquered portions of southern Kazakhstan and introduced Islam. In the 13th century, the land was conquered by the Mongol Empire and the Genghis Khan. In the 15th century, the Khazar Khanate, successor of the Golden Horde, was formed and existed until the 19th century when the Russian Empire spread into Central Asia. After the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917 in Russia, Kazakhstan was colonized by the USSR. Kazakhstan was turned from a nomadic into a heavily industrial region with countless plants and factories. Tens of thousands of kilometers of railroads were built. This came at a huge price though. When Stalin was trying to collectivize agriculture, Kazakhstan endured massive famine. One and a half million people died, more than a third of all Kazakhs at the time. After the collapse of the USSR, Kazakhstan finally became an independent state and today it's an amazing mixture of ethnic groups, cultures and religions. So let's begin the trip. Our first stop is going to be the capital of Kazakhstan. Welcome to Astana. But at the time of our visit in September 2022, the name of the city was Nur Sultan. How come? The city changed names so many times it's not surprising. Now it's Astana again. The Shim River divides the city into two parts. The right one, that's the old part. We find a lot of old neighborhoods of five-story buildings and the abundance of Soviet heritage. And the left part, that's the new part. This is where you find a lot of cool modern buildings designed by world-famous architects. Let's take a look at just a few of them. Palace of Peace and Reconciliation, in the form of a pyramid, next to the Hazrat Sultan Mosque. National Museum of the Republic of Kazakhstan, Palace of Creativity, Shabit, and the Palace of Independence. And between them is the monument Kasak Eli, on top of which there is the mystical bird Samruk, Nazarbayev Center in the form of a futuristic eye, Abu Dhabi Plaza. At 311 meters, it's the tallest building in Kazakhstan and all of Central Asia, and many more. The city became the capital relatively recently, in 1997. Previously, the capital was Almaty. In 2017, Astana got the world attention when it was hosting Expo 2017. Kazakhstan exhibition was in this interesting building that looks like a bowling ball. In fact, this is the largest spherical building in the world. Nearby, you'll find the largest mosque in Central Asia with a capacity of 30,000 people, which opened in August 2022. The name of the mosque is the Grand Mosque of Astana. Today, Astana reminds me of Beijing, Abu Dhabi, and Moscow at the same time. It's a dynamic city with a lot of construction going on. The central part of the city and the most famous street is Nurjol Boulevard. Behind me is an observation tower and it's called Baiterek. And it's probably one of the most recognized symbols of Nur Sultan. This is a tower that's 105 meters high, symbolizing a mystical tree of life and a magic bird of happiness named Samruk, who laid her egg in the crevice between the two branches of the tree. Nearby, you'll find the presidential residence with an excellent park around it. And if you go the other way, you'll stumble upon a building that may remind you of Atlantis Hotel in Dubai. This building behind me, it reminds me of Atlantis Hotel in Dubai. But here, it's just a, a building that belongs to one of the oil and gas companies. You know, because Kazakhstan is one of the major oil and gas producers. In front of this building, there's a plaza with a fountain and a good selection of cafes. 
so you can finally sit down and try a first Bishbermak. What's a Bishbermak? Bishbermak is one of the traditional foods in Kazakhstan and it means five fingers because nomads normally ate it with their hands. It's made from finely chopped boiled meat mixed with dough. And by the way, the meat is horse meat. If you go farther, you'll see the most famous shopping mall, Han Shatir, meaning the king of all tents. In Astana, even the shopping malls have a unique architectural style. Чем вам нравится Нур Султан? Нур Султан мне понравился. Он прям здесь такие высотные красивые здания. Прям дизайн мне вот это все понравилось. Потом понравился Байтирек. Я его в дневнике на обложке смотрела. А вживую вообще так супер прям. Впечатлений очень много, конечно. Я приехала с Алматы. Вот на три дня решила я. Я всю жизнь мечтала здесь побывать, и вот я здесь. What do I like about Astana? The city is developing fast. In the year 2000, the population of the city was just 380,000 people. And today it's over 1.3 million. There are huge investments coming in both from the state and private investors, which means lots of jobs. Housing is relatively inexpensive. What are the disadvantages? The city has an extreme continental climate, meaning hot summers and winters that can get really cold. There's not enough trees, which makes it difficult to find shade in the heat. The driving style of the locals is pretty hectic, and boy, do they love to hunt. У нас холодно, морозы, но зато зима ощущается по-настоящему. Если сравнивать с Алматы, например, у нас здесь много места, большие площади, ну, потому что степь, много места, в общем. Бюджеты, все деньги страны здесь, наверное, это тоже хорошо, потому что, ну, это так или иначе ощущается. Здесь хорошо сработает, то есть рынок труда, а здесь Астана город возможностей, здесь можно построить жизнь свою. Since the city is in the steppe, there are not too many places to go to for the weekend. One of the popular ones is Borovoya or Bura Bay, 260 kilometers north of Astana. It's a resort in the National Reserve with mountains, lakes, pine and birch groves and clean air. Now from Astana, let's go to the fourth largest city of Kazakhstan, Karaganda. Now that we're on the freeway, we can accelerate and the maximum speed is pretty generous, 140 kilometers an hour. Karaganda region had long been famous for its coal industry. Once a small settlement of miners, it received a town status in 1934. Today Karaganda is a large city where coal mining and metalworking companies are concentrated. So we decided to explore Kazakhstan more and right now we're in Karaganda or Karagandi. Karagandi is an industrial city and the center of coal mining. The population is 500,000 people. And it just happened that we got there at a time of the Miners' Day holiday. The whole city was partying. We walked around the park and the central streets and talked to some people. Скажите, есть такое мнение, что каждый второй здесь шахтер. Это насколько правда? Это правда на самом деле, да. У нас, в принципе, почти в каждой семье были люди, которые непосредственно сталкивались с шахтой. Вот, это город шахтеров. Раньше было, по-моему, около 60 шахт было. Сейчас, по-моему, гораздо меньше. Сейчас точно не могу сказать, но раньше было очень много. Пользуясь случаем, хочу поздравить наших э, карагандинцев, шахтеров с праздником Днем Шахтеров. These regions were notorious for the Stalin camps, Steplag and Karlag. We visited Karlag a museum in memory of victims of political repressions, 40 kilometers away from Karaganda. Karlak was once one of the largest Gulag labor camps. The museum is so realistic, it makes you feel all the horror and misery these inmates had to go through. In the 1930s, dictator Stalin started mass deportations. Koreans, Germans, Chechens, Poles, Crimean Tatars, and other peoples were forcibly deported to the cold northern steppes of Kazakhstan. Around a million people passed through this Karlak labor camp, Kazakhstan suffered greatly under the Soviet occupation. Nearly all members of the Kazakh intelligentsia were executed, and one-third of the population died during collectivization. Now let's go to the largest city of Kazakhstan. It's located right here, 
We were planning to drive to Almaty, but unfortunately, not a single rental company allows you to do that. They say the modern highway is not yet completed and there are too many bad sections of the road, so they don't want to take the risk. I just can't believe that the two largest cities of Kazakhstan are still not connected by a modern highway. Well, I guess it has to be a plane then. And one and a half hours later, we are in Almaty. Hey guys and welcome to Almaty and right off the bat I can say that in comparison to Astana the air feels different it has more humidity and also the city has a lot more vegetation which is great a lot more trees allowing you to hide away from the sun and it's really hot outside so that's a huge bonus you're walking and you're not getting burned Almaty is the largest city of Kazakhstan the population is 2,147,000 people it's located in the mountainous area of southern Kazakhstan, near the border with Kyrgyzstan. The mountains are visible from anywhere in the city. For almost 70 years, the city was the capital of the country. Today, Almaty is still referred to as the southern capital because of its economic, social and cultural impact. It really does feel like a capital city. Hey, the city even has a subway, although it's just 11 stations in one line. But it's really new and it was opened in 2011. Compared to Astana, the city has a better climate and is much greener. Tall trees with lush grounds provide shade from the sun. Almaty is called a garden city for a reason. There's many parks to choose from, like this gorgeous botanical garden. Almaty is a green city, but also there are so many parks, like right now we're in the botanical garden. Wonderful, huge. It has a lot of ponds, it has a lot of alleys, like this one's called the Oak Grove. or this Almaty Central Park. This bear mascot was having fun and running enough to kids, so I thought I'd have some fun too and give him a bigger challenge. <laughs> Barely got away. There are always a lot of young people on the streets, lots of outdoor cafes, and in some places it feels like a resort town. Almaty is a fairly compact city. The center is easy to get around on foot. You can start your walking tour from Panfilov Pedestrian Street. It's always crowded, there are street musicians and a good choice of restaurants. Don't forget to visit the Green Market and try some seasonal fruits. The symbol of the city is an apple. Almaty is translated from Kazakh as apple. The most famous variety of apples is Almata Apor. Подскажите, Амир, три вещи, которые вам нравятся в городе Алматы. Климат, горы и инфраструктура. Чем любите заниматься в городе? Ну, работать, учиться. А свободное время? Свободное время в горы ходить. Вот сейчас мы с другом позавтракали здесь неподалеку и собираемся в горы идти. И самое любимое, наверное, это вечером выходить и просто прогуливаться по улице, потому что ветер приятный. Ну, Алмата от всех городов в чем отличается здесь? И с деньгами, и без денег можно гулять. В Астане, например, такого не сделаешь. В Алмате всегда можно отдохнуть. Так как и студенту, и работающему, mm -hmm. и богатому, и бедному всем. А самое прекрасное в Алмате это люди, наверное. Все, все люди добрые по сравнению с другими городами. Все. А если, если один недостаток, как можно назвать? Цены на квартиры. Хорошую квартиру снимать, ну, от 200-250. Now, if you ask the locals what's the best place in the city, they're gonna surprise you by saying the mountains. So let's do the mountains. Let's take a cable car to this wonderful city park, Koktobi. We want to spend probably about an hour walking in the hills. It's going to be gorgeous views and one of the popular sites in the city. 
and you'll be getting some great views as you travel to a height of 1,130 meters above sea level or 200 meters relative to the city. It's a wonderful place. People come here first and foremost for fresh air. There's also an amusement park, a zoo, so many different activities for kids and adults. And there's the famous TV tower, and that's one of the sights of the city. Since the financial market's been going down, the charging bull relocated from Wall Street, New York, all the way to Koktobi, Kazakhstan, Almaty. An exact copy. Next, we go to the legendary ice rink, Medeo. It's the highest mountain sports complex in the world. The surface of the ice is 10.5 thousand square meters, or 2.6 acres. More than 170 world records have been set here by famous athletes. It takes just 30 minutes to get here from the city center. From here you can take a number of hiking routes, from beginner levels for a day hike to peak climbing for pros, or you can just go for a walk. If you don't like to walk a lot, you can take a cable car and enjoy the views, or get a taxi. Only electric cars are allowed, which means all taxi cabs are also electric. The ski resort is called Shimbulak. The ski season starts from late November and lasts till April. <laughs> On another day, we went to Big Almaty Lake. The locals say if you haven't been here, you haven't been to Almaty. So we had no choice. The lake is located at an altitude of 2,500 meters above sea level. The depth is 30 to 40 meters. And depending on weather conditions, it changes its color from pale green to dark turquoise. The big Almaty Lake is so hard to get to. You can't drive here because the road's been closed for three years. So the only way to get here is to hike for many, many hours, like four or five hours. It's so exhausting. But the bonus is there's not a lot of people here. See, it's only me and a handful of other people. And the rest is nature, you know. So if you want this relaxing experience, go for it. You won't regret it. Oh, let's get some sunshine. All right, now back to the city. In the evening, Almaty becomes an incredibly lively city. So many outdoor cafes and restaurants and nightclubs. I did not expect that. Regardless of the day of the week, it seems like Almaty residents know how to have fun. All right, what are the advantages of the city? Mountains, of course, lots of green areas and a mild climate. What are the downsides? Air pollution, traffic and high real estate prices. How's the economy doing? Kazakhstan is an oil country. In terms of its output, it ranks 12th in the world. In addition, it's 8th when it comes to coal mining and the 1st when it comes to uranium mining. Also, Kazakhstan is among the top 10 grain and flour exporters. It's the largest economy in Central Asia. Does that correspond to the higher wages? The average salary in the nation in 2022 is $670 per month. Not good, but not terrible. The local currency is called Tenge. Kazakhstan has its own stock exchange. It's located in Almaty. In Kazakhstan, prices are low for certain goods and services. For example, a liter of premium gasoline is just 44 cents per liter, or $1.65 per gallon, which is two times cheaper than in neighboring Russia or Uzbekistan. While corruption is still a problem in Kazakhstan, it's ranking above its neighbors. 102nd position out of 180 countries, according to Transparency International. If you love nature, Kazakhstan is the place to be. It has some awesome breathtaking places. Here you have mountains, crystal clear turquoise lakes, the endless steppe and even canyons. Let's see what you can find around Almaty. First place to go to is Asi Plateau. It's a high mountain valley, not the easiest to get to. So you better have an off-road vehicle. First the road will be like this, and then like this, and then these views open up. Wow, it's truly breathtaking here. On top you'll find the Asi Turgin Observatory at an altitude of 2,700 meters above sea level. Just look at these vast open spaces. It's a great place to unwind. 
Our friend Azamat starts and ends his summer season with a trip to this unique place. Компания у нас называется MSQ, казахстанский бренд. У нас женская, мужская одежда. В пяти городах мы по Казахстану. В плане вы все вместе работаете в одной компании? Да, мы все вместе работаем. From the top we could see a barely noticeable white dot. It turned out to be a yurt. In this area, you can still meet nomads who lead the same way of life as their ancestors did decades ago. And we decided to come back and spend a whole day with these modern nomads. Every year in May, they drive the herds to the mountains when everything is green. These shepherds live with their families in yurts until September or October, and then they all return to the villages for the winter. They also cooked local bread for us. It's called Bawasaki. There are several national parks in Kazakhstan. One of them is Altin Emel. On the way to it, you can stop at Lake Kapchigai, just 80 kilometers from Almaty. There's a nice beach with cafes, hotels, and water attractions. We were there on a weekday in September, so it was empty, but you can imagine how crowded it might get on a hot summer day. Another 170 kilometers along the perfect road, and we enter the national park, Altin Emel. The central office of the park is located in the village of Bashi. This is where you'll be given a pass and a map. There are several main destinations in the park. <laughs> the first place we went to was the Singing Dune. The road to it is an adventure by itself. Clouds of dust, sunset and silence all around. And the ride is so bumpy. Actually, the faster you go, the softer the ride gets, but scary at the same time because the car starts sliding. We were pretty lucky. By the time we got there, we were the only ones. The sound of the singing dune resembles throat singing, the sound of an organ, or the rumble of a jet aircraft. You can hear it well in dry, windy weather. If you want to, you can stay in a tent overnight, but we decided to go back to the village. Wow, what a magical place we are in the national park of Kazakhstan. It's really wonderful here, and we are the only two people in this area. Landscapes in the park are changing rapidly. And here we are at the Karatau Volcanic Mountains. They were formed as a result of intense volcanic activity in the region. This frozen lava has taken such bizarre shapes. And these are Aktau Mountains. These multicolored chalk mountains are sedimentary layers of Paleogene and Neogene of lake and river origin, basically a museum of our planet's distant past. There are lots of wild animals in the park, but it's not easy to get them on tape. On our way back, we stopped by a tree. It's a 700-year-old willow. They say that Genghis Khan himself rested under this tree during his campaign in Central Asia. But it's just a legend. And I know it's not true because the math doesn't work. 2022 minus 700 is 1322, and he died in 1227. The main roads to the park go through the local villages, and we met a shepherd, or as they call themselves, a Chaban. Hey, hey. 
Ну, у нас, как назвать, денег нету. Эти продаем, и будет денег. А как у вас рабочий день? Вот со скольки вы выходите в поле? Мы 6 часов все, выходим. Рано утром. В 6? Да, да, да. Сутки вот 7 часов загоним. Нравится? Ой, как он нравится. Надо едать. Жарко. Конечно, жарко. Сын растет, девочка растет. Все надо. Кормить же надо. И что здесь делаешь? Поля будешь смотреть. Это не будешь смотреть? Все. Бабок нету, денег да. нету. Да. Сколько стоит один баран? Один баран. Смотря большие или маленькие, 57, 40, 25, вот так. He invited us to his house, which he calls a fazenda. This is what it looks like. Besides cattle, he's got an apple orchard. Did you know that Kazakhstan has its own canyon? It's called Charin Canyon. It stretches for 50 kilometers along the Charin River. These red sedimentary rocks are about 12 million years old. Kazakhstan has so many terrains, and this one looks like a canyon, right? Wow. You get this feeling like you're in the Grand Canyon in Arizona, but yeah, pretty cool. If you walk two more kilometers down that way, you'll end up near a river, which we don't have the energy to do. It was super hot on that day. Luckily, there's a shuttle bus that can take you to the river and back. Looking good. Kazakhstan has some incredible mountain lakes. One of them is Kayandi. Sometimes you need a four-wheel drive to get to some place. This birch tree growth makes me feel like I'm back in Russia. Can you believe that? Like I said, Kazakhstan has so many terrains. Just an hour ago, we were in a canyon. Now, what does this look like? I would say Canada or Russia. Wow, all those fir trees and mountains. And down below is why we came here. There's a wonderful lake with petrified trees, fir trees. And we're gonna show you that in a second. This is truly a postcard landscape. The lake is difficult to get to. First you need to drive through the local villages, then cross a small river, and then ride a horse to the lake. Kindy Lake was formed after an earthquake in 1911. This valley got filled with water, submerging the coniferous forest. Now its depth is 25 meters. Truly a one-of-a-kind place. Finally, we have come to Kayandi Lake, which is famous for its petrified forest. And these trees have been standing here for more than a hundred years. This place has become unbelievably touristy. Just look at the crowd. Well, as you would expect, it's pretty cold. Further down the road are the Kalsai Lakes. There are three of them. The first of the lower lake can be reached by car. You can walk around the lake or you can rent a boat and explore the lake from the water. The second and the third lakes we didn't bother to visit because it requires quite a bit of walking. Many people come here to stay overnight and go camping and there are plenty of yurt-like hotels and regular hotels too. Now, finally, we're going to the west, right over here. Or as the locals call this area, 
Texas. And here we are in Shimken. Welcome to Shimkent. It's the third largest city in Kazakhstan and it's the largest city by area. The population today is 1.1 million. Now it's growing so fast that in 2001 it was just half a million, so it doubled. Yeah, so I'm in Shimkent. What do you mean where? It's the third largest city of Kazakhstan. You should know that. All right. It's very different from the previous cities. A lot more people speak Kazakh in Shymkent than in Astana or Almaty. The language issue is a hot one for Kazakhstan. In rural areas, Russian is almost completely forgotten. At the same time, many urban people continue to speak Russian, not learn in Kazakh. 17.5% of the population of Shymkent are Uzbeks. No wonder, from here to Tashkent, the capital of Uzbekistan is just 150 kilometers. It's a large city where life goes as usual. There are parks, cafes, shops, and a zoo. What are the plus Люди. <laughs> 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 There are not too many major sites, but there's a couple of amazing places in the vicinity, so let's visit them. First one is Akhmichit. Guys, I'm about to show you one of the wonders of Kazakhstan. This place is a cave, and it's called Cave Akhmichit. Now, for millions of years, this place had been enclosed, had a roof, and people had no idea it existed. And it wasn't until the 20th century that the roof collapsed and people discovered this place. Now, there's trees down there. I don't know what to expect. And there's so much echo. Can you hear me? This place is enormous. It's just huge. There was a legend that there used to be a dragon that lived here, okay? And he was stealing people's cattle until one of the prophets took care of that creature. Well, the dragon is no longer here, but there's plenty of birds, and when they make their noises, it makes a mysterious atmosphere. Wow. Wait a second, there's the dragon. The other place is Adam and Eve. We are 30 minutes away from the city of Shimkent, and we have come to a really cool spot. It's called Adam and Eve. And you see in the distance, there's a rock, and it has been split into two halves and that's why it's called Adam and Eve. The belief goes that if you can pass through it you're not a sinful person but if you get stuck or you're too scared that means you are. So let's go for it. You claustrophobic don't even come here. A real gem of this part of Kazakhstan is the city of Turkestan, one of the oldest cities in the country with a population of 200,000 people. It's just two hours away from Shymkent. Since 2018, the city has been experiencing a rebirth. Tourism is on the rise. 
The city is gradually becoming the historical and spiritual center of the country. Ancient Turkestan was located on the Great Silk Road going from Hiva, Bukhara and Samarkand to the north. The city was part of the empire of Amir Timur and later became the capital of the Kazakh Khanate. In the 12th century, a Sufi poet and philosopher, Hoja Ahmed Yasawi, settled here. He was preaching Islam and gradually brought a lot of students around him, who also settled here. To immortalize the memory of the poet, Amir Timur started the construction of Mausoleum of Hoja Ahmed Yasawi in 1389. Today it's the main attraction of Turkestan. But Timur died in 1405 and the construction was never finished. But despite its incomplete state, the mausoleum is in great shape. Let's walk inside. Today the modern caravanserai complex has been built around it, a fairy tale like city in the middle of a desert. There's a 7D movie theater, an entertainment center, hotels and restaurants. Not only that, there's also a library and a university here. Всем привет! Меня зовут Эльнура. Как вы видите, я из Казахстана. Добро пожаловать в Казахстан. Это национальный напиток Казахстана кузе. Кузе состоит из риса и айрана и там корт и так кукуруза. Да, да, кукуруза. Вот очень холодный и вкусный. Советую попробовать. Мы сейчас в Туркестане находимся. Вы сказали, что вы здесь учитесь, да? Да. Что изучаете? А, изучаю рестораны и гостиничные дела. Отлично. Как вам нравится Туркестан? Туркестан э, древний, очень красивый, э, огромный такой. Э, и здесь жарко, а так все классно. You can explore everything on food or take a ride with a guide. Туркестанга хош келдиңиз эге менеки экскурсия аралап жатыңыз. Туркестандан салем. Lots of investments are coming in. For example, this mosque was built by the Turkish Religion Foundation. It's called the Hoca Ahmed Yasawi Mosque. Как у вас впечатление от Туркестана? Очень, очень хорошее. Но мы, в принципе, сами туркестанские. Что больше всего понравилось? Ну, все строение, все вот это. Масштабность. Дверь, масштабность. Столько гостей. I got a suggestion. The scale is enormous. You just keep walking and walking one park after another, but then there's nowhere to hide from the sun. So that's the complaint. You need some shade. You need some shade because it gets exhausting, you know. Other than that, I love it. This is the railroad terminal of Turkestan. And if you look at it, it's a European building. It almost feels like it's out of place here. It was built in 1903, when Kazakhstan was part of the Russian Empire as part of Tashkent Orenburg railroad line. Wow, just how many hands have touched this handle? Is that a line? A panther? It's pretty cool. In the evening you can take a boat ride and watch an amazing performance that tells the legendary story of Tolligan, a brave warrior, and the beauty, Jebek, that ends tragically because of inner family feud. I don't know about you guys, but seeing horses and camels along the road, grazing on the grass, is kind of unusual to me. So, but this is southern Kazakhstan. This Texas area is pretty amazing. We visited a local farmer, Juman guy. He's a camel farmer and has around 50 camels. <laughs> in this area, winds and sandstorms are not uncommon. For example, the day we arrived was like this. But in the evening, everything calmed down. In today's fast pace of life, to be in a place like this is a blessing. You start to appreciate small things. Life on the farm is different. Juman guy also has goats, sheep, cows, and even a racing horse, and he takes good care of them.
now the camels have returned from pasture. It's time to milk them. You ever wonder how they milk camels? Well, let's see. Camel farming is a profitable business, apparently. Camel milk is in high demand. They make delicious shubat out of it. That's a sour dairy drink. Also, the Chinese buy it in bulk, then turn it to powder and send it to their homeland. I think this area's got a lot of tourism potential that hasn't been realized yet. Чем одна корова заит, пять верблюдов доешь в такое время. Mm -hmm. а. Это еще на стое. Это двенадцать тысяч. I heard about the Kokpar game before going to Kazakhstan, but I didn't know if we would be able to see it or not. And one time we were driving on the highway and we saw crowds of people in the field. We stopped to see what was going on. And they were playing Kokpar. Good. Usually they play one village against the other. Players try to place a gold carcass in a goal while remaining in the saddle. After the game, the carcass is not thrown away, but given to the winners. And they cook dinner with it. Uh, А вот тут же разные улы играют, да? Разные, а две партии тут. Ага. А ваш какой ул? Нижний. Нижний. Играете сейчас или да сами играли? Пенсионер. Уже. А -а -а. уже пенсионер. Пенсионер. Уже болельщик. Все. Хорошо. Наши годы пролетели все. Kazakhstan is huge. There's also the Caspian Sea coast and the city of Aktau, which is a major seaport. And in the summer months, it's a resort for those who want to relax by the sea. Besides the Caspian Sea, people come here to see the Stuart Reserve. This used to be an ancient seabed. All this area was covered by water in the distant past. Wow! Now let's talk about food. The basis of Kazakh cuisine is meat, dough and dairy products. Meat is most often lamb, horse meat or beef. Mm -hmm. The main national dish is Bishbur Mac, which we talked about earlier. Once we were invited to a village house to try Bishbur Mac, Local hospitality is great. Manti is also popular. It's dumplings, usually with lamb or ground beef. Kazi is a horse meat sausage. Sometimes it's added to plov, bejbermak and other dishes. Kurt is a local snack. It's salty cottage cheese that's been dried in the sun. Kurt was very popular with nomads because it's so easy to carry it with you. And of course, don't forget to try kumis and shubat. Those are fermented milk drinks from mares and camel's milk. Because there are not too many trees in the area, people are still using kizyak, or dried on fuel, that is dried animal feces, mixed with hay, as a fuel source. This is how they do it. Kazakhstan has some ecological challenges. For example, a 40-minute drive from Karaganda, you'll find Timurtau, a city of metallurgists. And the name translates as Iron Mountain. It's a city of 178,000 people with an obvious air pollution problem. The local steel plant pollutes the air and the local rivers. Timurtau is constantly covered by a small cloud, and in the winter they say the snow sometimes turns black. Wow. But the biggest problems were inherited from the USSR. During the Soviet days, Kazakhstan served as a platform for various kinds of nuclear tests. Just look at Semipalatinsk. People in this region still have consequences in the form of disabilities, including cancer. In 1994, Kazakhstan, alongside with Ukraine, decided to denuclearize its territory by returning all the nuclear warheads to Russia. Another problem of modern Kazakhstan is the shallowing of the Aral Sea that they share with Uzbekistan. What once was the fourth largest lake in the world, due to disastrous Soviet agricultural policies, almost became a desert. Nearby is the Baikonur Cosmodrome that Kazakhstan inherited from the USSR. It's the first and also the largest operating cosmodrome in the world, founded in 1955. Russia is currently leasing it from Kazakhstan till 2050. 
What other challenges is the country facing? Corruption and income disparity. See this burned down building? It's the aftermath of January 2022 protests that began after a sharp increase in liquefied gas prices and then spread all over the country. Peaceful demonstrations turned into violent riots fueled by rising dissatisfaction with the government. As a result, 227 people were killed and almost 10,000 people were arrested. Kazakhstan's first president, Nazarbayev, stayed in power for over 27 years, so people had high hopes for changes when the new president took office in 2019. <laughs> Ну у нас все есть, если так посмотреть. Ну каждый, как, конечно, тоже должен работать там, стараться делать для себя, для семьи. Но как бы правительство тоже должен обеспечивать тем, что у них есть, а не так как бы просто, если как сказать правильно, все в карман или для себя. Ну я хочу такую страну для казахов. What are the people in Kazakhstan like? Friendly and proud of their country. Yes, Kazakhstan became a melting pot of destinies and people, and today it's proud to be home to so many ethnic groups that were forcefully deported during the years of Stalin. The local Kazakhs sheltered them and helped them survive, and now more than 130 ethnic groups consider Kazakhstan their homeland. So let's sum it up. Kazakhstan is developing fast. Its abundance of natural resources, enormous land, great potential in tourism, and lots of resourceful, smart people might be a recipe for a bright future. Amazing nature and friendly village folks is what I'm going to remember from my trip. So, what do you guys think about Kazakhstan?